We're here at the State of Silicon Valley conference today with Tim Draper. Tim is one of the leading venture capitalists in, in Silicon Valley. And Tim, I guess a question that's on the minds of a lot of folks here today is looking ahead in 2008, what do you see as some of the main sectors, some of the main opportunities that really excite you? Well, we're really excited about things whenever an entrepreneur comes to us and says, we're, we have something that could absolutely convert an industry. We can change an industry completely. And this industry has been a little lazy, and now it's time to shake them up. Um, I think the media industry is really starting to feel that. I think uh, the, the uh, oil industry, actually, mm -hmm. is getting fat and lazy, and I think there are some great opportunities there in clean tech. Um, I think that there are a number of other industries that look like they're ripe for the picking and entrepreneurs are very clever and they'll come up with great solutions uh, to, to change the way those industries think and do things. Now you've had a lot of success over the last 20 years uh, helping bankroll companies like Hotmail and Skype and uh, when people talk about the economy these days uh, there's a lot of talk about recession and housing problems and a slowing economy. Uh, how much does that affect your outlook going ahead? Is that going to slow the kind of venture capital investment that creates a lot of these great companies? Well, uh, fortunately uh, our, our firm is global now and we're we're focused on uh, entrepreneurs wherever they are mm -hmm. and so that turns out to uh, to make it so that any recession in one area um, can be uh, dampened by some growth in another area and so we are still very actively investing we think it's a great time to be investing uh, the global markets are opening up and uh, we're and so our markets for entrepreneurs are also opening up and we think it's going to be great. Now you mentioned clean tech. Uh, there's a lot of talk in the in the press about clean tech. Is it a bubble or is there real long-term growth opportunity there as you see it? Well there is real long-term growth opportunity and and what's considered clean tech today, solar, wind, geothermal, uh, hydro, uh, are all uh, big industries waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. But currently all of them together add up to less than 1% of, of all of our energy use. So right now we're still 90% hydrocarbon and 9 or 10% nuclear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you mentioned media. Talk a little bit about that. I know you, your uh, firm is an investor in Glam, which is a women's uh, website. What are some other places you see media going in the next five or 10 years? Well, media has, has been hit by a typhoon. The typhoon came in, uh, totally shook up the media monopolies, and, uh, and all of that typhoon spread the, spread the media to the winds, where those media monopolies used to have a one-to-many penetration, where one camera would reach everyone. Now those cameras are so cheap that uh, it can be many-to-many. And, and that is going to be an enormous change in media, and it's already happening. Bloggers are coming in. The pundits who used to know everything now don't know because uh, if, if one of the pundits says one guy is going to win the presidency, then, uh, then the, the bloggers will say, no, this woman is going to win the presidency or, or whatever. And, Can you make any money in these new media areas, though? Uh, well, that is yet to be determined, but, uh, but we actually do have a few that seem to be doing incredibly well. Uh, Glam.com is one of them, and it's growing uh, faster than any company that we've ever invested in before. It's faster than Skype, faster than Hotmail. Uh, it is an extraordinary company in that uh, what he's done is taken a woman's site uh, which would be a very simple business, and incorporated all the bloggers and all the, all the very interested parter, parties in, in women's issues. Mm -hmm. And it has become the fastest growing company in the world today. Let me ask you about China. You uh, have a big presence in China. I know you, uh, you travel to China a lot. Where do you see uh, China going in the next uh, <clears throat> 10 years vis-a-vis -vis its relationship with the American economy? Should we worry about China? Should it, should it be uh, something we're excited about? What's your take? I think we should be excited about China. I think uh, growing China is very good for the Silicon Valley, good for America. Um, I think it's, it's fantastic that that economy has grown so fast for so long. Uh, the Chinese people are living much, much better than they did 15 or 20 years ago. 
we're very excited about what China has become and what it could be. Mm -hmm. And that growth, I expect, to continue for many years to come. And there will be extraordinary innovations coming out of China that are going to benefit everyone on the planet. Let me ask you one final question. A lot of people out there are looking at all these trends, globalization, and a potential recession, and it makes them nervous. Uh, we've had a lot of talk already at this conference about uh, the stress in the middle class. What advice do you have just for regular investors out there, people with 401ks, people who are just trying to make sure they keep their heads above water in the next couple of years? Well, over the long haul, mm -hmm. the stock markets have grown at 12 to 15 percent from for the last century plus. All global stock markets have grown 12 to 15 percent. So over the long haul, if you just hang in there, it's going to come back. Uh, I, I also think that uh, this globalization creates a unique opportunity for extraordinary growth in the stock markets. And I, I think they should, should be actively investing today, particularly with dips because of people fearing recessions. I just thought of one more. Are you ever going to run for governor of California? That's always a buzz that we hear in the background. <laughs> well, you keep that buzz going. That would be great. Okay. <laughs>